it all started with John Alba, that pesky little motherfucker started this uh, started this drama um, between Eric Bischoff and Tony Khan. I mean, there is always drama there, uh, regardless, just because of the fact that Eric is so critical and we've covered on the show immensely like dude how do you not listen to bischoff and there's people who maintain oh bischoff is just jealous and he wants a job and he wishes he was in wrestling and he wishes he ran a wrestling company blah 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 everyone sure, i'm fairly sure eric is pretty happy doing what he's doing man yeah <laughs> making dude. money making money hand over fist living in wyoming and not having to travel yeah and just podcasting like that yeah. is dream you know you're 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 talking to the wrong people if you're trying to you know, so either way, though, Tony Khan just throw in calling people frauds and all type of shit. So I'm going to share my screen. Just make sure everything's closed. Yep. Everything's closed. Present. the OK, do, 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 do. Here we go. And so um, we have John Alba here on the right side of my screen. You see at John Alba, who I actually unfollowed. It's crazy. I'm not mm -hmm. using type like this trigger me so much. I have to unfollow. But goddamn, it's not even triggering. He just says shit where. There's a reason Tony felt comfortable coming under John Alba's shit and trashing Eric Bischoff. Now, um, if I may, Eric Bischoff started two whole new fucking podcasts. So people underneath are going, uh, like, we'll read what happened. But people are like, yeah, you know, fucking Bischoff, a failing pod, all this shit. The thing is, he started two new ones and one where he doesn't have to sit there and look at John Alba's schmarmy fucking mm -hmm. fake while he's you know just i was not super paint. familiar with john alba i didn't really watch strictly business unless it was like a clip that i wanted to see uh but i have heard nothing but awful things <laughs> i didn't get it at first people were like oh he's such a prick <laughs> i was like i don't know man I, it was same with conrad i didn't get it till i because i'm like you i just watch clips you know mm -hmm. um until now like i gotta listen to the whole thing because i love eric so much but anyways um where are we so some news tonight, this is at John Alba, some news tonight about the future of Strictly Business with Eric Bischoff. And the statement goes on to say, unfortunately, this week's episode of Strictly Business with Eric Bischoff will be the last edition of the podcast. Eric's schedule is loaded these days and for good reasons. Uh, he'll putting his efforts, he'll be putting his efforts into other endeavors. I'm extremely grateful to have had a chance to share a platform with Eric for the past two years. We are we are 38 years apart. That's crazy. I didn't realize that. And have wildly different views of pro wrestling, storytelling, and even life. Yet I think that has been one of the most fascinating parts of our dynamic and never fails to make for engaging conversation. I have always said Eric is one of the greatest television performers in the history of wrestling, um, or sorry, in wrestling history, and doing this show has been one of the most exciting challenges of my career. He has made me a better broadcaster, helped open new professional doors, have been extremely gracious to me personally. I hope you'll join us this week as we bid farewell to the show. Blah, 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 blah. So, uh, and shout out, John. Like, that was very tasteful and uh, wasn't shitty, and I doubt it's even, it's probably like, an amicable parting is that the right word like I, I i they i don't think this is like anything hostile between them but i did tweet out the other day the look on eric's face when john alba saying stupid shit is what gets me watching the <laughs> podcast all the time and so i i don't know obviously they pick up on it too and other people pick up on it too and i just think eric it's like stressful for him sometimes having to sit there and listen to the way alba like will try and justify <laughs> some of this shit so Tony Khan responds, though, and, and Eric Bischoff's tagged in it. Tony Khan responds right underneath. This shit got 1.5 million views, almost 6,000 likes. And it says, this is at Tony Khan goes, and this is at 4 a.m., mind you guys. 4 fucking a.m. his time. People looked into it, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sun like yeah. Like Christmas Sun morning. Right, drunk in a hotel, mm. fucking shirtless, wearing fucking tiger slippers. Uh, yeah! So anyways, at Tony Khan, <laughs> sunsetting, <Yeah>! this, <laughs> sunsetting this fraud of a business podcast before the next AEW media deal is a wise choice. So listen to how he words it, too. It's such a telling tweet. So one last time, Tony Khan says, sunsetting this fraud, sunsetting this fraud of a business podcast before the next AEW media deal is a wise choice. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. Sort of implying that the next media deal, which he didn't say TV deal. Yeah, that was an interesting choice of words, was media deal. Well, 
it lends to what Dose was saying on yeah. Toon Wrestling, Toonie Talk Wrestling. Shout out the show. We'll play that clip in just a moment. But he calls the the podcast a fraud of a business podcast. Um, and yeah, and then he says before the next media deal is a wise choice, implying what? He's going to make Eric look stupid with whatever gets announced. But media deal, choice 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 words there which yeah. we'll delve into a bit but i just want both of your guys's initial reaction to yet another tony con adderall adderall well, 4 a.m meltdown the, the first thing i want to point out is the tweet immediately under it where it says i thought this was the fake tony con account, Me too, I which i think means which i think means uh uh tony con which uh for the record tony i do have the balls to have responded to that with tony con i just don't get on that account as much anymore Right. And and so, uh, and that's actually uh, revealing to some, I don't know. I didn't know if everyone even knew that you were Toonie Khan. I don't even know if I knew that before that, does, but look, how do oh, people know that I'm not Toonie Khan? <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty obvious. I, I'm, I'm just twisting titties here, but here's the thing though. Cause he hashtags dynamite. And then right underneath Tony responds to what you, the tweet you pointed right. out here, he responds to it and goes, he didn't have the balls to do it himself. Like laughing and gifting, which like, it'd be funny if he gift people, like in a funny way, but it's the fact that this is how the toxic fucking nerds act. And this is why mm -hmm. it's like the fan base. Like they're just copying what Tony does, you know, and yeah. they think it's okay. But hairline, I just want your thoughts. Like, what do you think? Another Tony Khan? This will be great. Let me go at Eric Bischoff. So do either of you guys follow Elon Musk or anything? Because like this I is exactly how he acts when he throws a fucking tantrum on <laughs> fucking Twitter or really fucking whatever the fuck. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my, well, my buddy Apollo has a theory about Elon Musk that he's an alien from the future who's just trying to get home. Mm. And yeah. I, I think that the I think that the science supports that if you look if you look yeah. deeply enough into it. Yeah, I always said I was like uh, I was like, yo, he shot rockets up to space with cameras. He realized they they've been lying about the Earth is flat, and then he came back and started trying to expose Illuminati. That was my joke. I don't know. <laughs> But, okay, um, anyway, like, yeah, this, this is the same shit Elon Musk does when he fucking he starts using gifts and fucking like a billionaire not yeah. having his way, kind of is what you're picking up from it. Yeah, it just seems to be like a spoiled rich kid tantrum thing. Yeah, I could, de I, I mean, I, I just think he's also got a lot of vitriol towards Eric. He thinks Eric's undermined him, doesn't value him, doesn't appreciate his shitty, mediocre fucking angle storytelling, um, which we'll get into with a fucking Meltzer I moment we got over here because he's finally what? piped up. And uh, uh, sorry, just Meltzer, he, he fucking, he hasn't put over, just to sidetrack for a second, he hasn't put over the raw one bit. He's just fucking... Um, like he, he's just talking about the negatives. Oh, everyone was shocked about Vince and everyone. That's a topic for another time. But I know. fucking Dave, dude, you're you're spiraling, bro. Like he couldn't even say one positive thing about the raw. He's just coping over the the negative things backstage that weren't really negatives, but I think they should be. So fucking just goobery. But, you know um, what? You know what's funny? I had kind of an epiphany this week about like the way I conduct myself on Twitter, and I realized that I was being kind of like you know tribalist and and you know like like overly angry to the point where it was like affecting my own mental health and i real and what made me realize that is watching dave Meltzer do this stuff yeah. i was like man am i acting like dave Meltzer? man that's like a scared straight moment yeah dude absolutely <laughs> that's a good epiphany to come to oh no so we just some of the responses are fucking hilarious so tony he does that whatever but yeah so basically calls eric a fraud um of a business podcast media deal, which we'll get into what evil dose said, shout out evil dose, but down here, just AR gold. Congrats, Tony. AEW has outlived Bischoff's tenure as WCW president, president and his podcast. And I just wrote, he just started a new podcast with someone else, bro. Please get the balls out of your mouth. Uh, <laughs> this one's hilarious at rascal thunder. It's 4 a.m. Where's my motherfucking laptop. Oh, Tony. totally. That's exactly <laughs> what happened. <laughs> oh dude well done mate because you really do love wrestling you're just a glorified brian last giving this con man a platform what the Come fuck I and they tagged conrad Con whoa combine uh, sabia is that the combine sabia that used to be an indie promoter uh are you kidding you're entire could be are so you kidding you're in uh let's see christian yes that's him journalist okay that's him. So he, he says, so Art let me tell you, can I, can I just like take a yep. deviation here? Like I never met the man, but like, I, I, you know, like I used to follow the Indies in the Northeast and that was kind of, he was kind of legendary because he was a wrestling promoter who never went to his own show. 
He had he had a gore he has agoraphobia or had agoraphobia. He wouldn't leave his house. So that he is... would literally he would literally book his shows and then have his mother run them run them for him at the show. <laughs> his and, mom. Yeah, and then like when, when he would when, when he would bring in draws, they would have to come to his house to meet him. My word, dude. But that's I mean, it's a good business model. He goes on mom if anything goes wrong. Yeah. <laughs> are you are you kidding? Your entire company is a fraud of a business. If you listen to even 10% of what Eric Bischoff said, you might see an increase in ratings. You only want to listen to people who praise you because they want access to the locker room or your cash. Um, yeah, I'm just here to say John Alba is a hard worker and doesn't deserve to get wrapped up in this. Okay, thanks. Bye. I mean, yeah, she does have a point, like Tony fucking. By the way, like, agoraphobia yeah. notwithstanding, from what I I never went to an SSCW show, but what I understand is Combine ran some pretty cool shows. Yeah, I mean, I ain't hating, dude. You just uh, you just came with a little tidbit of fucking fat. That's what you get here in PWT. Oh. Little tidbits of wrestling. You wouldn't have uh, otherwise known. So, um, yeah, so Tony Khan, uh, Eric Bischoff, rather, goes to respond to Tony Khan, which I must have bookmarked. You had to have. I had to have. There's no way I didn't fucking. Oh, good. You got no. the quarter hours. Yeah, I do. I got it all, bruv. I got it all. Bruv. Uh, oh. No, dude. I swear to God. Okay, so when I book, I'm starting to notice a pattern here. When I bookmark on my... Uh, just go to on just my, go to Bischoff's page. I'm sure it's uh, like right up there. On the yeah, top. exactly. When I bookmark uh, would, on my phone, it uh, some of them don't go through. I'm starting to notice. Oops, I misspoke. You know, I, I got an Eric Bischoff I retweet today, actually. Did you? Good. Oh, I, got, I got a quote tweet, actually. You'll see it here. Okay, so his replies. Um, so here, uh, Tony thought he cooked. We'll just read some shit. Tony thought he cooked only for Eric to say, nah, bitch, I'm multiplying. But I do have to give him credit for giving me a great title for that series. Why <laughs> <laughs> Wise choices. So, so let's see here. We'll find it true, but boy, okay. Here we go. Marv Movie Monster says, um, I'm Do you want sure me to read it in my voice? Yeah, yes, please. Yeah. You're here, you might as well. I'm sure Eric Bischoff sees Tony Khan's 4 a.m. meltdown of a strictly business for what it is. What Tony unknowingly did while taking his victory lap like the Young Bucks in front of an empty arena after Punk was fired was create a ton of interest in whatever Eric is going to have to say on the next 83 weeks. That means more views, more YouTube ad revenue, more people using the promo codes, more money in Eric's pocket. Because as strictly business taught us, business is about making money. Tony is great at gener generating interest and ratings for shows that aren't his own. Uh, as is, uh, it's as true with Eric as it was with Ariel Helwani. Don DeMarco, just kidding. <laughs> but dude, you dropped a bomb on everyone. And then Eric Bischoff quote tweets that and goes, "And watch for a special announcement within hours." Oh, dude, you're getting the fucking rub. Marv's getting the. Rub. I think that's like the third, second to third time he's he's quote tweeted me. So I I I, I do enjoy that. It always makes me happy. Yeah, it's good to see you're in his like uh, alg algorithm. So Apparently. Adon Stevens, who I've been, uh, who's been, <laughs> I've got some cool guy. Got some documents. Yeah, good guy. I don't know whether he's spitting facts, but he does have these papers that I don't see why he doctor these, and I've seen so many of them that I don't know. I think he's a real guy. He just he's, he told me he's going to come on the podcast PWT just once he retires after this year. He's like, I'm done after this year. My voice will give me away. I'll come on your pod when it's done. So I'm holding to that. Gonna come, he's going to come on and he's going to be like, oh, hell yeah. How's <laughs> it going? I'm here. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. So uh, Wrestle Ticks, uh, he quote tweeted wise choices, AEW money, hashtag money mark. Eric Bischoff does. He quote tweets Wrestle Ticks who show the empty fucking building. And look at this building for Dynamite. This is when Osprey's in the ring. To open the show. Look at this building. Good Can Lord. you folks see that? I oh mean, my goodness. There's more top than human being. This uh there was three thousand four hundred tickets distributed. The building holds like fourteen thousand people. No, oh, oh my god. More. So over so, over ten thousand empty seats. Yeah. Uh they, they don't just let you they don't just let you rent the chunk of arena that you sell. You have to rent the whole arena. But like what I I said like why like why not run like smaller buildings like the Manhattan Center or like Hammerstein Ballroom right. like we you just put that, them over you, a week ago for doing it so you'd have that more grassroots feel and somebody was like oh well they wouldn't be able to get this stage I'm like good like <laughs> I, we don't need like the stage having a stage is not as good as having a full arena I'm sorry like WWE brought out their smallest set on Raw this past week because they wanted to pack more people in. 
Yeah, and so Bischoff's starting this new show with this guy here, who I gave a follow to. What's his name? Brad Pack, and he um, he's an author, and they started a new show called <laughs> The Six Pack. So he just ditched Alba for another dude right. who's probably just going to be objective. Look at guys here. So Eric Bischoff goes on to tweet, a money mark with no talent other than spending daddy's money, going all the way to Canada to draw less than 4K in one of the hottest pro wrestling markets in North America talk about quote wise choices strap in it's going to be a fun day Fuck, bodied. Man. bodied and look at this building this is for uh, I, th I believe it's ring of honor look at the ring right so they do the oh, ring no. switch yeah so if you've ever been to one of these guys they do the rings they switch the um apron and everything quickly they just and they're like oh everyone sticker they do it for rampage too literally in between Dynamite and Rampage, Kenny Omega came out and told us to make sure we give all the wrestlers love, even the ones we don't like. Make sure we're showing everyone Be love. Be disingenuous. And so I was like, man, because, dude, I booed Daniel Garcia like my fucking life was on the line. You know, <laughs> like if I cheered for him, I was going straight to hell. I was I was booing that motherfucker and they were trying to get him over with that dick wiggle stuff. And I was like, no, nah, no. Mm -hmm. nah. So, but Kenny and the Bucks came out after Rampage and were like, or between, and we're like, yeah, don't, um, don't, uh, boo, like, or show love to the ones I know you guys like to boo, but show love to the ones. So, whatever. But look at this. And this is, is what it's like, man. There's this many people at Ring of Honor. Like, Christ. There were more, there were more people at Ring of Honor shows on the indies in the early 2000s. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and people were like, well, Ring of Honor was out of business before Tony bought it, whatever. It's like, yeah, but WWE would have bought all the tapes, too. You can't say this is better for Ring of Honor. It's not. It is, it's it is, not. You it's know, like, I would rather be dead than be a vegetable. The Right. It is, it's diminishing its fucking what it once was. Like, this is what Vince did. And to the reason w. why Ring of Honor was dead was because Tony killed it. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. like he didn't like swoop in like some benevolent savior. He ran it out of business and then bought it. They were Vince did. It's it's crazy, oh. man. Um, yeah. Sorry, hairline. What were you gonna say? No, I was just booming. What? Oh, you're just booming. Just, yeah, yeah. ad libbing. Yeah, what? Whoop yeah. that trick. Uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> Stand uh, up, mom the monster, y'all. <laughs> so we're yeah we're gonna stick on we're just gonna stick on aw stuff here because there's a lot we're gonna do wwe stuff on the live show guys with Meltzer um and just some other great wwe announcements but um or maybe yeah yeah because i want to talk about the dynamite and i got the quarter hours here which i don't do people oh you're stealing Cornette's bit and it's like dude he Who didn't said that? invent efap just people that like just people are like oh i saw this on cornet show it's like yeah i don't do it all the time but like you got to do it in certain instances um anyways though uh at machiavelli dta shout them out because they're a good follow great great account it's a good yeah. follow so dave Meltzer, who's been i brought it up early i didn't mean to hot shot it but it's just it had to be said like he hasn't said one nice thing about raw and wwe raw's trending right now in canada so i don't know why but um, he couldn't say one good thing, but here's him sticking up for AEW lately after they did an abysmal fucking rating. We're going to go into how bad the rating actually was for the Dynamite. So Dave Meltzer says the problem isn't that AEW doesn't have storylines. It's that they have too many. It's just too um, much for the average viewer to wrap their head around because right. it's so complex. and oh Right. And I didn't, I didn't hit the flute, but we're going to do it right now. Yeah, for sure. Because I didn't even think I was going to do a Dave Meltzer dummy moment of the week because I didn't have one until literally a millisecond before we came on. I go, oh, I'm bookmarking this. So anyways, um, Gosh. this is at so at EJ Malteza, uh, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, it's so they tweeted out it's possible. And this is hold on. So just I want to paint the picture. This person, Manny, we'll call them Manny, is replying to not even I don't even see Meltzer. Now it says samir 313 and two others maybe one of them's Meltzer, but like he's in some conversation in the weeds with some marks why is dave even responding to this in the first place so manny says it's possible to book in a way to make quality matches mean something ricochet versus jd mcdonough is a perfect example in the last three weeks they were telling the story that ricochet is a thorn in the side of judgment day they gave ba 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 he goes on to explain it at Dave Meltzer, W-O-N, responds to this, quote tweets it and goes, if you watch AEW, they do that much for almost every match oh, and wow. more for a ton. 
Just listen to this sentence. If you watch um, AEW, they do that much for almost every match and more for a ton. What oh, the fuck God. are you even talking about? And then he goes on to say, AEW s does so many stories at once, you can't remember them, which is the issue, man. They're cooking with so they... much gas that you <laughs> choke on it and die. It's, it's not that they don't do stories. They do so many at once that you can't even remember them all, man. That's the issue. It's well, now, so nuanced. Now, 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 now you're starting to sound like Triple H. Well, for I'm just trying to. It's just he's sitting here like it's some psychedelic oh you gotta smoke ayahuasca to understand it bro it's so deep aw so it. deep like what the fuck are you talking about you man? have to have a six-figure annual income to be able to understand yeah dude and it's what it's what eric bischoff says it's not that it's a bunch of storylines it's a bunch of cheap angles and they're elementary as a fucking writer i'm gonna put myself out there and say it's elementary novice level shit basic storyline or it's like the beginning of something that doesn't get followed up on or there's no there's no sensibility and there's no and then people want to go like dave goes oh there's so many stories happening at once you can't even tell what's going on okay but then when you bring up well, why is it two heels fighting for the belt like who am i supposed to show? oh well it's uh, the modern day and heels are but, 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 but that's not storytelling then right because his storytellings are about it right protagonist and antagonist um vocation why are they doing things what are they doing why why do they need to do this thing those are the questions that need to be answered and those don't get answered in these storylines it's just like i don't know uh, at the at the everything like even um just take christian cage like oh he's doing great um he's great on the mic even take like an angle that people like they put over christian cage okay but like what is mama wayne's and Nick Wayne, like, why is Mama Wayne just hanging out? Like, oh, he's he's manipulated the mind. Excalibur just goes, oh, and Mama Wayne's been influenced by the Patriot. It's like, no, that's not what's telling a fucking story. That's how that's just like doing an angle, then having an announcer just explain his fantasy mark way that like show me why, tell me why, explain it why. That's what a story is. So I, I shouldn't even have to explain this shit, but yeah, Dave Meltzer is just absolutely fucking spiraling and he's lost all credibility and we're just going to keep cooking him until the ends of time your guys' thoughts on dave here i mean he's clearly talking at his ass trying desperately <laughs> to defend you know tony he's he's the chief tony defender and I, and what i said the other day uh on twitter x was basically he needs this uh this division he needs this tribalism he, he needs to foster that flame because the only way he continues to exist is if people think that like he's like the mouth he's like the journalistic mouthpiece of the revolution you know like he he's the uh he's the guy to follow because he he's got the inside scoop on everything we need to know and he's being proven time and time again to just be a complete metal he's everything eric bischoff says that he is a useful idiot a complete fraud he there's nothing to him there's nothing Tell me. yeah yeah man hairline what are you thinking about this guy so, like, did you guys see where he was arguing with Alvarez about, like, how it makes sense in wrestling logic that... Right. Um, it, does, it doesn't make logical sense, but it, it makes, makes wrestling booking sense. Yeah, yeah it, it doesn't make logical sense, sense. No, but it makes FDR booking versus sense. versus fucking the Boomba Clock Club. The Bumba Clock Club? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. So just like exactly, hairlines just like dude. More what do you expect? Yeah, you're just. I know. I already know. Hairlines like, dude. Fuck these guys. Like they're just goofballs. So, um, but yeah, hairline. Like, like I, I don't know, man. Just the whole storyline thing. We harp on the story so much. It's why WWE is so compelling. I mean, Dave's just fucking losing it. Um, and then yeah, I, I don't know. And and exactly like the perfect example. I, I was saying like if Dave Meltzer doesn't show up blowing that JD McDonough ricochet match then he's a fucking fraud because just period if he doesn't give that shit seven stars he's a fucking fraud well there was too much selling involved you know too much selling but not enough at the same i how much you want to bet he's going to be like well after that canadian destroyer he was up pretty quickly right and uh oh i fucking guarantee it and also um so here i'm going to share this other screen but uh, we covered on the show yesterday with paul nolan hairline and myself talked about we played a clip about kenny omega burying dave Meltzer's star rating saying yeah. i wouldn't have given any of 
There's a bunch of matches I wouldn't given given stars to. Kenny started reviewing his old matches and reviewing them. So Paul Nolan's like, I read one of them, and it's way more compelling than Dave shit. Like he's actually I'm- critical of himself and all of these sort of things. And he's go and uh and Kenny goes on to say, like, dude, Kurt Angle's the goat and all this shit. He's like, That's my goat, you know? So, like, how the fuck. No. How much of this know. do you think is Omega being kind of salty that Dave has kind of moved on to Osprey? That's like what we guy, right? So yeah, we pointed that out on the show. Like that's it's it's a bit of that, but at the same time, I think it's um. You remember? So Paul Nolan pointed out. He's like, do you remember when Kenny Omega was backstage and was like, I wouldn't have hired eighty percent of you. Like that's what came out of yeah. their backstage meeting. So people were like, oh, that rubbed people the wrong way and people don't like that. He he seems like, uh, you know, like Cornette and Brian Laster, like, you know, people we talk to thinks he's a goof and stuff. And, and I could totally see that and how he comes across the wrong way. But Paul Nolan pointed out as well, he's like, well, but maybe that's him also just being like, no, like, I don't think a lot of you guys are good workers. And, and um, Omega talks about the selling, the in-between stuff and how I explained it to Hairline and and I'm Paul, I was, just, I was just saying like, dude, it's the little things in between he does where like the reason he comes across so cartoony and goofy is because he's really trying to sell. But my interpretation of Kenny is that he's forcing this fast paced style to pop that audience, but he does understand which Marvel say, well, he knows how to do it. So he should do it right. And you are right about that. But I think Kenny, um, I don't know. He just seems like he, he was just kind of burying the whole notion of like AEW and fucking Dave Meltzer and basically what all of those, and what they embody basically you know what i mean he buried it all and then went on to say kurt angles the goat and fucking i just couldn't it couldn't be funnier you know in the middle of this dave spiral i just think it's hilarious so um yeah um here sorry i just want to pull up the uh okay so we have dynamite i just want to go over this card quickly um because we do like to do reviews i got bleacher report here and is it eric beeston that's our guy no it's doc chris mueller so eric Uh beeston he's a good fucking he's good at um being honest and giving everything a fair shake uh but like i don't know nolan was like yo bleacher is owned by warner and they do shill to aw a little bit so but we just use the site because the way they lay it out you know that's great yeah so (laughs) Oh, it's great. It's so great. And what's uh, uh, the best thing ever and the safest company ever is Will Ospreay versus Katsuyori Shibata. So they kick things off. We saw the video of the attendance, man. It was fucking abysmal. Osprey comes out. Now he's over. Everyone's cheering yeah. for him, but they start the show with this match. He's just wrestling Shibata out of nowhere. And then you have Excalibur quickly going, oh, their lineage in Japan. And we saw the video the other week where whatever of their history and then um osprey hits him with a fucking tiger driver right on his head uh dave Meltzer one time said that shibata got his brain removed and then put back into his what? skull you know what people keep keep people talk about that all the time i have no idea what they're referring to so so shibata was forced to retire in new japan because he did a headbutt spot where he headbutted a motherfucker and it was it actually fucked him up then they did some like um advanced type of brain surgery on him which is like a real thing but what dave literally said went out and said he's like yeah they did the one of a kind surgery um they removed his brain from his head and put it back head that's fucking dave said that man this is not Uh. a joke so yeah um and it wasn't that at all you know what i mean or like he didn't even get brain surgery he got like uh maybe he i'd have to google it but he did get some sort of like new type of surgery and then dave is like oh it's this advanced japanese sir they removed his brain and put it back in his head like he had to have his brain removed and put back is like what he said and inferred it or implied at least so i don't know it's just ridiculous but then in this match shibata's eating osprey's like elbow to the fucking head and he eats a tiger driver now they they did it pretty safe Uh, even the AEW fans were like this match didn't live up to the hype and to me well because osprey's trying to take care of shibata and to me it's just a long match that meant fucking nothing, nothing for nobody just there's not and like the production's so bad because they're filming around the empty building and this is just an ass way to start off this fucking show this guy great is it one it of those is that is that is that one of those uh you know million different stories that they're concurrently running at the same time that you know maybe that's why we didn't right. get it because there's just so many stories going on what's the story here oh well in new japan they feuded over oh okay. great that's a story for a match for them in new japan in Quebec, what, what's your story yeah, for you exactly. 
Yeah, what the yeah. fuck? So, Hairline, what was your thoughts on uh, this match? Man, so, like, honestly, you kind of ruined Will Osprey for me, like, when you pointed out his impact run, how it was all like, it's just this move, and then he's fucking stepping on his own dick and making the next move not be as valuable, and it's just that again and again and again and again. And he wrestles that match every single fucking time, dog, with 200 kickouts. Yep. It's, it's uh yeah, once you see it, you can't unsee it, and uh, it's right. pretty daring. So then we get, there's some backstage shit, I don't even know, but we get the Young Bucks versus Private Party now, did you guys see the clip on X? I didn't get a bookmark of it. Um, but basically, well, there's two things. Let me fucking find it. I'm gonna have to just find it. But basically, yeah. this match was they're hyping it up. Oh, this was Private Party's first match in AEW, uh, and they actually won against the Bucks. And like there, that just goes to show you, like they get nobody over because Private Party, no one even remembers who the fuck they are. The crowd didn't care, and they came in and just did basically a uh, flippy shit hairline what's your thoughts on this as i pull up uh these clips here of the young bucks how the hell did this gonna be that's where i want to start <laughs> what the fuck doc how did you give no, it a b it was not a b dude i don't know it was just fucking filler um mm -hmm. the bucks are really over with me right now though um that that promo they did with fucking renee Moxley, good <laughs> where he was all like oh mars more pretty than you yeah good sh good shit brother it's good shit pal so uh i'll share with you this screen quickly i want to show you the um so here's a botch this is how they botch the finish though so the bucks botch the finish fucking brutally you guys can see that yeah oh, here yeah. we go here's them fucking watch this God. you see that oh man <laughs> fucking fuck and then they also on the entrance um here young bucks entrance they did a cody vader they did an elevator and they botched it to where watch this i don't want to get pulled down by fucking aw i'm not going to play the sound but the elevator didn't work so they had to like duck oh yeah yeah i saw watch what? this shit Dude, like the elevator wouldn't go up, so they were like, "I'm um, here." Like the elevator stopped working. Or was it on this? Or was it on collision? Fuck. Okay, it might have not been on dynamite. Yeah, it was. On what you're referencing to is uh when they came out later on in the show. Oh yeah, so they come out later on in the show, and the elevator botches. Um. Yeah, so this entrance, basically they stole the Rock slash Roman slash Austin Theory's entrance and kind of amalgamated it into one. But yeah, there was one, where is it? Anyways, just take my word for it. There, You'll find the clip online. They come out later in the show through the elevator and it fucking botches and they're like ducking down and then fake going up because the elevator gets stuck or whatever. It was just, it was fucking hilarious. And um, yeah, I was putting the bucks over, but this was just an awful edition of dynamite and um i don't know i like their gimmick and stuff but they're just slipping and botching their entrance and they're just coming across as goofballs and the it's too little it's too like, little too late with right. them it's they have they have just been been what they've been for so many years i don't think it i don't think you can reinvent yourself now i don't know I, some people can do it jericho did it hogan did it but i don't think they can do it I absolutely concur with that. Um, and hairline, uh, I got, I got really quick. Speaking of people rejuvenating their career, the new Marvin the Movie Monster clip over what? on Tooney Town Wrestling. <laughs> the, the Dusty Rhodes. Oh, oh, yeah the 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 face lock feature that we did, which was um, five wrestlers who torpedoed their legacy and five who saved them. Right. Yeah. That's, I tried. Sorry. Well, make sure you guys go and watch that video if you have not yet. I was really, uh, I was really uh, concerned. I, I didn't think people were gonna like it because it's not like super comedic. Toonie's not in it. You know, Trip's not in it. Yeah. But people, people really liked it. So I guess uh, we're gonna do more of those. More. Yeah. Well, yeah, people like more. you, Marv. That's the whole. That's the whole thing, right? So I thought people <laughs> just liked the other characters. But okay. Like, yeah. No, man. It's 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 definitely just whatever you got going on. It's working. So just more of it. That's that's what I say. Um. Okay. So. 
uh, so yeah, they're just botching it up. The fucking um, let's go back to this dynamite and we'll just keep uh, trugging, slugging through this. So to me, I just kept tuning out of this episode. I was not invested. They just lost me. I was putting the show over for two weeks, and the Mercedes stuff really bummed me out. Which um, let me just see back. Okay, no. So we get Chris Statlander, Sky Blue, Anna uh-huh. Jay, Willow Nightingale in a fucking messy four way. Anna Jay, it's like she's one and. Why? eight or some shit she's in a title eliminator yeah, uh, mercedes monet's on commentary tony khan goes oh no actually when i announced the rankings and posted the rankings those weren't actually the rankings so you guys remember he brought the rankings back two weeks yeah. ago or whatever mm-hmm. he then he went on to say he posted a new graphic with the new rankings oh my god but he goes actually i was kidding about the other ones the, the new rankings start next week it was all a joke Dynasty. And you fell for it, ha <laughs> Dude, literally, man. It's fucking insane, dude. So April he's now- Fools! I'm, I'm, <laughs> so, I'm so ahead of the game that I'm doing April <laughs> Fools jokes in May, in March, ha <laughs> Yeah, April Fools, but a month early, ha huh? Get it? I'll we'll never see it coming, ha huh? It's great. It's great. Oh, my God, dude. It's, it's just embarrassing. And then they have Monet out here. She comes out. The crowd isn't as into it as they were before. What crowd? But um, but uh, no, nah, I don't. Whatever. Three K. That's a good house, I guess. If it wasn't in a fourteen thousand seater, she, um, she's old news already. That's the problem. Yeah, she's and old, she's old news already. Exactly, and it's fickle fucking fandom. I knew it's just because this is why too. Everyone's like, oh, I want to see her in bangers with fucking Willow and fucking Statlander and fucking I want to see against Hater who's injured who's had like a career threatening fucking injury I want to see her against like all these names they're naming up Mariah May it's like dude Mariah May is literally doing Tony Storm's WWE gimmick that's her gimmick Tony Tony Khan's like oh I know Mariah May will introduce you as a generational talent on commentary and then you'll just do Tony Storm's WWE gimmick. It'll be great. It's fucking insane. And so now what? So I called it. They're going to have Edge be the TV champ for the men. And Mercedes is going to be the TV champ for the women. Because she's in line for the TBS title shot. And also like Sky Blue's in this match. But she's friends with Julia Hart. So what the fuck's going on there? Is she is she in the match or is she on commentary? Well, well, Mercedes isn't in the match. Sky Blue, though, is okay. in the match. Who's Julia's tag team partner? So yeah. why is she even in the match? All oh. you have, to, and then and then Statlander and Willow are partners. Ugh. And they and and then you have Anna Jay, who's just keeps getting hurt because randomly she comes back once a month and does a hardcore match. And that's literally what it is. I'm not even making that up. So. Oh, yeah. So Mercedes, she's on commentary. This yeah, match that's, that's goes, what people want to see. They want to see her on commentary. Bro, and so the camera's not on her. And then when they do go to her, she has nothing to say. There's no one in her headset telling her, like, not that you need Vince go, yeah, they'll put over the fucking Beyblade. You know, like, yeah, put over how big his pecs are. Like, the, but, but I mean, are we yeah. like, are, are we maybe believing that she's not medically cleared to wrestle yet? Like, why are they not having her rest, having her actually fight? I just think that Tony, because this is why she's on a part time deal. It's on some Hogan shit where she only has to have X amount of matches, but X amount of appearances. I guarantee that's what it is. And um, that, yeah, and that's just what it is, bro. So she's a part timer, just like Edge is a part timer, just like all these guys are part timers. And everyone's like, oh, I want to see her wrestle this guy and this guy and this guy. She's going to have 10 matches over the next three years, guys. Okay, because she's gonna go do Hollywood shit. She's gonna go write a book. She's gonna do all she this. She's not gonna do Hollywood. I'm shit. not saying she's gonna be this big star, but she, I mean, she's gonna try to do Hollywood. She shit. has connections. Dude. If they like, can't they like they, her over at Disney, you know. If they, yeah, but if they can't call her WWE superstar Sasha Banks, there's no, there's no point. It's uh, you know, and yes, they called Maybe. her. M- M- she was Mercedes yeah. Fernando in uh, yeah, in cause... the Mandalorian, but. What did she she had what did she have one line in the Mandalorian? She bumped Boba Fett once. That was it. Right. But I mean, I mean, all I'm saying is fuck even that, that show. Like there's there, there's other production companies that there that might maybe she's in some fucking low budget Hulu show or something. So at some Blood point, and Honey a, three. We don't yeah, dude. You know, we <laughs> we don't shut out Winnie the Pooh. We we don't know. All I'm saying is that she has aspirations that aren't solely wrestling focused. Is just the point I'm trying to make. Like, fuck, I don't know if she's gonna be a big mega star. I don't see her that way either. I think she's I think, gonna be as successful in non-wrestling ventures as Chris Jericho. 
Yeah, so she's going to get super over when she comes back to WWE. Like, the crowd will pop for her. Welcome home. She'll get that treatment, da-da-da-da-da. But we're not getting these bangers with all of these people because they just these people aren't signed to fucking do that. And then when Tony Khan does have Edge, what does he do? He puts him on collision, and he wrestles Daniel Garcia. Mm -hmm. And then Daniel Garcia takes Edge to the limit. And you're just sitting there going, whoa. Like, this is not, this guy's true. This is really like a diluted thing. So, whatever, hairline, your thoughts on this fucking match. This was a bunch of people all over the place doing spots. Oh, the point I want to make the match went on too long, and Mercedes sitting there for long periods of time, not saying anything, not being entertaining. And the match is so long that it's too long to get her over or get their angle over or get over the fact that fucking their, um, because they did a face-off kind of after where like Mercedes is standing on the outside and Julia's on the inside of the ring with the belt and they're staring each other down. No one gave a fuck. The crowd gave a, a crickets anti-reaction because they don't, there was like Mercedes couldn't get over on TV in this. It was just all around bad. And then there's these girls are doing all these spots they can't do, not shitting on women. I, I like the like I like Willow, I like stat, but it's just what the fuck is going on here? So, um, yeah, I guess Mercedes is going to be your next TBS champion. Hairline, what are your thoughts on the match, please? If you're with us. May have a connection issue. But, okay, well, we'll, we'll move along. Stokely Hathaway, though, is funny. And mm -hmm. he, here's the problem, though, too. This is what they had Stokely do. He fucking, because he accompanies Statlander and Willow, who are a tag team. He accompanied Willow to the ring ran back up the ramp and then accompanied Statlander down to the ring. That's what he did. And you're just sitting here going, what the fuck? So the best friends took on the ROH tag team champions, undisputed kingdom in an AEW world tag team championship tournament. Like come the fuck on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like it, it is. And then it's Cassidy and Beretta. And it makes no sense. And the best friends win, dude. So no. hairline, hairline, I want your thoughts on this. So I want your thoughts on the four way. And then I just want your thoughts on this uh, tag match. Yeah, my bad. No, no, it's all good, bro. All right. So yeah, go back up quick. All yeah, right, for sure. So, all right. First off, Statlander, she did. Okay. She was trying, but like when you're, you know, it's like, it's kind of like similar to Charlotte. It's like Charlotte's working with what she has, you know, and most people fucking suck. Anyways, Sky Blue <laughs> was pretty entertaining. Um, I 100% agree with you about Monet on the commentary. She needed someone in her ear telling her what to fucking plug and yada, yada, yada. Because, like, I don't know, man. Like, her without writers is fucking... Ugh. Well, she um, has Peppermint. Where was Peppermint at? Right. I don't know what the fuck Anna J has to do. She can't, she, she can't script her on a, on a commentary track. Well, just someone right. give her some fucking notes. Like, where's someone who can not script, not script, but but like, just is there some fucking jot notes so you can just go, hey, yeah. Monet, remember this? But you have Tony. Or, we watched or, it on alter, AW alternately. All alternately, we could hire people that don't need that. <laughs> And yeah, present yeah. them as big stars. Actually, that would be the easy thing. And then also, though, like we see Tony on All Access where he's yelling in the mic, ha, ah, I love that. Ha, ah, that's great. It's like it, that's who's yelling in your ear. That's fucking crazy. Sorry, here I more time. Oh, um, yeah, and Willow's great. Oh, yeah, really good. Um, and it's a goddamn shame that they're gonna have Willow fucking dethrone thrown fucking heart just to give the fucking belt to Sasha. Oh yeah, you know it's another fucking NJPW storyline here in <laughs> AEW. It's great. Oh man. Okay, um, and I want to say one last thing. Hold on before. This isn't about that, but can we just point out how Tony flew out fucking Okada this week just so he could watch the Young Bucks match backstage? Crazy. What the fuck was that? Well, I just think he pre-taped it and then they just showed it on the TV and then they lied because they did that with Christian. They got caught showing a, a oh, thing man. that Christian taped in Collision. They did the same thing and put a Dynamite logo on it one week and pretended he was backstage and Twitter pointed it out. Um, so, yeah, they just pre-taped it. And, um, but, yeah, so – and then Hairline, your thoughts on – so they have the Ring of Honor World Tag Champs in an AEW World Tag Championship Tournament. What the fuck? And they lose to the best friends after they spent a year building up these devil geeks. I love Mike Bennett. I like Matt Taven, but your thoughts? It's like, it's such a waste of Trent Beretta, and at the same time, it's such a waste of fucking Bennett, you know? And it's just like, Orange Cassidy can fuck all the way off. Honestly, with fucking Tony's fucking bullshit, I'm not sure if fucking... 
if the if the Bucks are going to take the tag titles or if fucking these guys are going to take the tag titles. You know Hail and Hail and be careful. Phil has a Orange Cassidy T-shirt. He might get offended. <laughs> no. Yeah. If if you go back to like the very first episodes of PWT, it's like he used to be so pro fucking AEW, but fucking. She hit the iceberg and fucking started sinking. It's the fans, man. It's what people pointed out. They're like, they see how Tony acts and then they go. Cause like once I started the pod, I started being like vocally (laughs) critical. And then you just, it's just, I don't know. Murder. She wrote from there, I guess, if that makes any sense. So then the main event, (laughs) Kanosuke Takeshita versus Swerve Strickland top rope, catch a vibe. So I'm, I love Swerve. I like Takeshita, but again, he's just Swerve is menacing and evil. Takeshita has been a fucking heel. Um, it just why waste either of these guys in this match when they're not connected in any way? And it was a good match, I guess, but it was just like Kanosuke Takeshita kicking out of all of Swerve shit. So why do I think Swerve's gonna beat Joe? Which I I don't want him to anymore. At one point, I was like, Swerve should be the one to beat MJF. Then they had him invade a baby's crib, and I'm just like, okay, now they they have to have him like save a nun from a burning church in order to redeem him. And they just haven't been able to redeem him for me. Um, but he he's super over. I like Nana. I like the presentation, all that. And then, but you have this stud in Takeshita. This should be your international champion right here. Um, and yeah, dude, just, it was, it was an okay match. This guy gave it a B plus. I'd say that's fair, but it was also just a lot of kickouts and false finishes for me. And yeah, your thoughts, Airline. So like, what really like taught me up here was like, Take a shit of really like had a lot of good facials during this match and the way he would sell things and like mm. even tried to like hype up the crowd at one point. So like I don't know, man. I really thought Swerve made him look good with all the fucking selling and all that, but definitely fucking the match dro- fucking went on way too long. But you know, and who's your world like who's your world title contender like between these yeah. two after that I match? Mean, like, oh, Swerve's supposed to be going for the world. Like Joe kill both these guys is basically how it came across. It's just so silly that they every match they go to the limit. Oh, I want wrestling. You got the wrestling fans with the stopwatches. That's the current gimmick on Twitter now. Oh, we time every single every single thing. It's just fucking nuts, man. Um, uh, it's like, hey, Tony, uh, the pay-per-views are supposed to be what the taking the people to the limit thing is supposed to be for. But. Yeah, man. Oh, no. want, it's selling. Selling for a reason. We talked about it with Paul Nolan. It's called selling because it sells. It's the selling part. That's the whole point of it. The fact this even needs to be said. So we go over to the ratings now, what everybody came to see. And um, mind you, th- this these are the ratings that came out <clears throat> after he was lambasting Eric Bischoff at 4 right. a.m. So to bring it full circle, um, he was talking trash on Eric Bischoff until 4 a.m. And uh, or at 4 a.m. rather is when he started. Who knows when he when he because, you know, he's just sitting there. He likes to troll. You can kind of tell, but he takes it personally. But either way, here we go. So first we have um at Etten Gregory. uh. Po- posted these so thank you and these are the quarterly hours quarter hours quarter for um quatra hours for nielsen who some people say that's not the jet um for yeah and remember now we're gonna bring this all full circle tony khan said media rights he didn't say tv so i think he's just he doesn't care about tv anymore which we're gonna play doses clip quickly as well but that's the sizzle to the steak daddy right here. The quarter hour. Sorry, Jim Cornette stealing your bit. Sorry, Mark's in the comments. So Big Bang has 939. So even less than usual. She can't give that to Dynamite. Um, and then so Shibata Osprey, it goes down to 802. Um, by the time that it ends, Danielson gets a video. Young Bucks are backstage. Um, then we get Okada with Young Bucks and Private Party. That goes all the way down to 711. 711. It goes up. Uh, when let's see, we got Darby has a video with Tony Hawk. Oh yeah. That was so fucking cheesy. And then Jericho was backstage with hook and was like, Hey man, I've never managed anyone in my career, but I really think you're awesome. Let me, so if you want, I'll manage you. I was like, no, dude. I was like, no, please, for the love of God. So I don't know, though. He got a little spike, though. Look, Hook, at the end of the day, Hook is, uh, you know, they, they show that Hook has something with the Joe match. 
And then all of a sudden it was, oh, he's a little over, is he? Time to get involved. Oh, dude. Yeah. I'm so young. So then, uh, yeah, yeah. So they have the, they have the little, their little angle with Renee Paquette, Renee Moxley. Good. So then, uh, they get a little bit, they lose some ratings. Willow Nightingale, Chris Statlander, Anna J sky blue. Um, it goes through ads. It's too much. Then Dustin Rhodes is backstage and he gets challenged by the butcher. And it's like, they've been on TV. So six we're at our lowest. Then we go to 654 for Undisputed Kingdom. So think about that. And then Young Bucks and Kyle O'Reilly backstage. Adam Copeland is on the lowest rated segment of the night. Edge is on the lowest rated segment of this fucking show. You guys. I mean, it's unbelievable. And then we get Strickland versus Konosuke, which does nothing. 658K. Is that, um, is that an overrun at the end there? Yeah, of course. So it, got oh, a little, of course. it got a little, it got a little boost from the overrun. Oh no, I gave you more time. Um, seven, seven twenty four, seven hundred twenty four k. They get a little boost for Strickland. Kanosuke continued, and so then seventy thousand people tuned in for whatever Marvel movie was playing at the right. end. Right, and then they right. they were lucky enough to get Samoa Joe in a suit backstage, going, "Oh, both these guys are fucking trash, and I'm gonna beat like fucking uh, Swerve wants it. He can get it then." Finally, now without the overrun and without the Big Bang Theory lead in, where they did the little weird magic, where like the last minute of Big Bang Theory is the technically the first minute of AEW. They're they're doing. I think this week would have been under seven hundred thousand. Oh, it would have. So they did. I I was at. I think it was seven seven four or seven four four. Um, I actually have another tweet. Raj Giri will break it down. So they did seven seven four or seven four four. But, um, yeah. If you factor in what Marv's saying, I mean, we're talking six. Like we're talking. Um, NXT is going to start beating this shit in the ratings. And I think we talked on Tooney Wrestling, Tooney Talk Wrestling about um live every tuesday night about um the fact that when they go to cw that's probably going to yeah. happen on the regular i mean that's inevitable so we have raj giri here yeah so he has the numbers right here um i was wrong it was 747 so i was around the ballpark so a this is per at the raj giri says aew dynamite garnered its second worst key demo 18 to 49 rating in show history in its regular time slot the second worst in history mm. And its lowest audience in its regular. Oh, that's okay though. Party. The key demo doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, now it doesn't matter. This Average. week, th- this week it definitely doesn't matter. But you know, when they won the Friday Night War by beating SmackDown on a night where it was on FX for 15 minutes in the key demo only, it was the greatest thing that's ever happened. Yeah, we won the we won the Friday Night War. Huh? They're down seven percent from last week and fifteen percent, um. In the key demo from last week and year you'd, over you'd year, assume, you'd assume that with Mercedes, like they would, they should be trending upward if she's the face of the company now. Yeah, and year over year, Dynamite is was down ten percent, while the the key demo was down eighteen percent year over year. Man, just a fucking utter embarrassment. And this is after Tony talked all that shit. To Eric Bischoff about oh there's a fucking media deal potentially and it's going to be great and that's what brings us to evil dose uh, you know what before you do that Phil can, can I just bring up one point here yeah the damage that these people are now doing to their careers so Tony is paying big money for people like Mercedes for people like Moxley Jericho Edge now when they try to we, we saw this when they when Moxley apparently Moxley and Jericho reportedly when they tried to go back to WWE WWE wouldn't match what Tony was offering. And that's the problem here. And they have now proven that they are not draws. They have proven mm-hmm. that, th- that the company actively suffers with them as part of it. They have no drawing power outside the WWE machine. WWE is doing fine. The problem is now, in order to go back, Moxley, Jericho, Edge, Mercedes, they will all have to take a pay cut. And I can't see that happening. Yeah, yeah, I don't see any of them doing it, uh, and especially, and then uh, pay cut and more dates. Yeah, so 